What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Beginner Bike Giveaway series. Uh, today, we're starting it off right, starting it off in motion. Uh, just kidding, we just hit a red light, so we will not be in motion. <laughs> um, so if it's your first time checking out one of these episodes, welcome. Thank you so much for watching one of these episodes. Uh, if you don't know what's going on here, this is our 2018 giveaway Suzuki SV650. Uh, and I've got a 2019 Yamaha YZF R3 back at the garage. Here's some wonderful footage of it. And both of them in the garage, rather. Uh, if you want to learn how you can win these motorcycles for free, hit the links below to our Patreon or our merch page. Uh, every dollar you spend gets you an entry to win for our merch and if you sign up for our patreon you'll be automatically entered to win based on the episodes i make every week so without further ado today's episode is going to be talking about intermediate riding tips so stay tuned for that So these tips and tricks and uh, techniques I'll be talking about today, uh, you know, we focus on the beginner rider here a lot, but today I want to focus on someone who's maybe been riding for six months to 12 months, is really starting to put down some miles, starting to really understand, uh, you know, what's good and what's bad about riding, how to do certain things. And uh, yeah, so let's get into it. I think the very first tip I'd like to discuss is, uh, I mean, throttle control is everything when it comes to riding a motorcycle, right? This, this little tube right here that spins and allows your engine to open and close, it is the number one thing that uh, connects you to your motorcycle, uh, bar none. So learning how to do that extremely, extremely well and when to crack it open and close is uh, definitely a beginner tip, but an intermediate tip, I would say, is learning how to uh, apply throttle without uh, getting it too jerky while you move your hand around, right? What do I mean by that? So if you watch my hand right here, I'm going to point my helmet down but keep looking straight because i got to see where I'm going here. Uh, you'll notice that I can continuously apply throttle no matter what I do with my hands. I had to slow down here because people are slowing down. But um, if you'll notice right through here, right? Like, I can move my hand around in all kinds of different ways. I can hang my fingers over the brake lever if I need to, all while providing the same amount of throttle. Uh, this is a really important skill. It's important to learn how to maintain smooth and steady throttle no matter what your hand is doing. Um, the way I'm doing that is I'm simply keeping the pressure on the throttle tube with at least two points of contact no matter what. So right now those two points are the inside of my thumb and then my palm over here. But then if I want to just apply it with just my two fingers right here, so now I've got my thumb and my pinky right there. Uh, no, sorry, my pinky, my index finger. Uh, that's how to do that. But then if I wanted to hover over my brake lever, I would simply do the palm trick again and then hover over my brake lever right here. And then since we got a red light, I'll apply brake pressure, downshift, and we'll be good to go. So understanding how to maintain that steady throttle, no matter what your hand is doing, uh, is a great, great tip and thing to learn when you're riding. Uh, it's definitely something that really, really helped improve my throttle control. Uh, and also, like as, as many people uh, don't know, I actually do have quite a bit of nerve damage on this arm and on this hand. Uh, I cannot move this hand in the same dexterity that I can with this hand. As you'll notice, it's just, it's a little bit slower. I can't move it quite as well. So if someone who has, you know, uh, nerve damage like I do can do it, you can do it too. This is a bonus tip right here, but always put your bike into neutral when you're sitting because you don't have to keep the clutch uh, engaged while you're just hanging out at a red light. At least I, I do that because I'm uh, lazy. But when you do do that, you'll want to watch the lights to make sure that you're in gear and ready to go like right now. That was good timing. <laughs> So the next tip I'd like to discuss, and it's related to our steady throttle hand, is uh, learning to brake with only these two fingers. Um, this is a bit of a controversial subject because some people like to do one finger braking, some people like to do two. Uh, you'll notice someone like Schaff on YouTube, if you've ever checked him out, he rides pretty consistently with one finger over his brake lever the entire time. Uh, I do things a little bit differently, so it's all coming down to personal preference and taste. 
but um, you know I really do prefer uh, getting on the brakes with two fingers like that I think it just works a little bit nicer for me um, so learning how to brake with those two fingers as opposed to grabbing the entire lever with all four fingers is definitely going to provide you a little bit better control. The reason you want to do that is because when you brake with one or two fingers, uh, you still have those two points of contact on the throttle with your other two fingers and the palm. So while you brake, you can still operate the throttle if you need to. That's really great for downshifting, right? So as you brake, you'll downshift and rev like that. So I'm applying brake pressure right here, but I can still rev the engine as you can see so learning how to do that along with your steady throttle hand is going to be very very useful for you the next tip i would like to impart while we are kind of stuck behind this uh truck here is um whenever you downshift as you probably have noticed you start to lose a lot of speed and momentum right so i'm in third gear right now if i simply go down to second i'm already slowing down quite a bit right um the issue that happens oh we can pass this guy now Excuse me, sir. Thank you. The issue that can happen, though, is if you're in traffic and you decide to downshift whenever people are behind you, but you don't let them know that you're slowing down, not everyone is trained to kind of give motorcycles a little bit of extra space and be mindful that they slow down without tapping their rear brakes sometimes. So or that's happening the brakes rather uh, so that that's actually the tip i was going to recommend is whenever you do downshift to slow down like let's say uh you know in, here in these kind of twisty roads it doesn't really matter because um you know you're just out here kind of there's not that many people but when you're kind of stuck in traffic let's say you're in fourth gear right here and there's some there's some people coming up ahead and you just kind of want to downshift whenever you do downshift go down to second just tap your brakes a little bit on the rear this will flash your lights behind you and that'll alert the person behind you that hey like even though uh you know it may not appear like it i've actually slowed down a lot it's just a nice way to let people uh know that you are slowing down so that's a really important tip i would say uh, the next intermediate tip i would like to give is to be as light as possible on the bars um, this is why I spread the good word of tank grips far and wide as much as I can uh, because whenever you can grip the tank this allows you to leave less pressure on the bars. Um, I mean it's hard for me to explain over camera but I, I have the lightest grip on the bars as I possibly can pretty much at all times. Uh, your throttle hand is always going to be a little bit heavier than your other hand, mostly because uh, you are gripping something, but you should still be gripping it as lightly as you possibly can. There's no need to just squeeze the throttle while you're doing it, uh, because that's going to make your inputs on the bars uh, heavier than they need to be, and it's going to make your ride just kind of jerky. So if I can show you here, I will, I will simply, like, I'm not even touching this bar over here. I can lean this bike over just like that, with, with barely providing any input go here on this left right here and all I have to do is just look I'm just I just push so lightly and I'm in the corner right here and it just holds the line right it's not gonna do anything unpredictable so again if we just push over here on this side ever so lightly we're holding the line and it comes back up so being super light on the bars I think is uh, an incredibly important skill set that every motorcyclist should have but when you're first starting out it's hard to, to kind of do that so I would say that's definitely a good intermediate tip for uh, riders I think the next intermediate tip I would like to give and my last one that I would like to give is uh, you know hanging off the bike this is something I've kind of come around on so hanging off the bike is usually best practice um, there's really no substitute for hanging off the bike because whenever you hang off you scrub off lean angle and uh, it allows you to ride better um, it's pretty much you know you, you should be doing it pretty much all the time I, I would say but the thing is if you are just starting out um, and you're kind of still understanding clutch control and your throttle and your brakes and your slow speeds and you're not super comfortable don't lean off the bike like just just don't do it you don't have to do it. you can actually get a lot of lean angle and you're probably going to make it through nearly every corner you need to uh, i would say like 99.99 percent of them without hanging off um, I will actually uh, demonstrate back over here uh, that you can take all these corners at a relatively good pace without even hanging off your bike at all. So 
Uh, although hanging off is a great skill and you should 100% learn how to do it, uh, take your time in learning how to do it. I, I would say allow yourself to really understand uh, how to ride a motorcycle proficiently before you start attempting to, you know, really get in there and hang off the bike and do all that fun stuff. But until then, uh, just practice good throttle control, practice good line selection. Then you can start experimenting with hanging off the bike. Because if you don't have good throttle control and you're uh, practicing poor habits, um, it's not going to be good for you, right? It's not going to be good for you to, uh, you know, be hanging off the bike while you have those bad habits. So, so focus on one thing at a time. Try to try to really dial in a skill one at a time. Uh, this is something I do when I'm at the track, for example. Uh, this is much more advanced riding, but you know, you try to focus on one skill and allow all the others to exist in a baseline. Uh, you can do the same thing on the street. This doesn't have to be super high performance riding, but if you're out, you know, maybe it's your second, third month riding and you're like, you know what, I'm going to go out to the mountains, I'm going to go out to some curvy roads, uh, I'm going to try to practice the best throttle control that I possibly can. Um, so just focus on that, you know, that, that would definitely be an intermediate tip for me, is uh, if you're out there having some fun on your bike, focus on one thing at a time and you will be happy. Oh, we're doing some, some scrambling here on this bike. <laughs> So I'll show you guys here as this section of road gets twistier. Uh, speed limit here is about 40 miles per hour. We're doing about 50. Um, and I will not hang off the bike at all. And I'll show you that you can absolutely still have a nice time and rip through some of these roads. By simply just practicing good throttle control and picking good lines. Drop a deer down here. Not hanging off the bike at all, right? We've got a car in front of us now, unfortunately, but uh, we'll still try to have some fun. So again, not hanging off at all, approaching this corner, just looking where we want to go. And we've caught up with the car. So as you can tell, you, you can definitely have some fun uh, without even hanging off. So. Uh, don't feel like you, you have to be, you know, pretend MotoGP on the streets to, to run a really fast pace. This is something that actually I, I came across one time when, like, a few years ago, I was on my Daytona on a back road, and there was this dude on an adventure bike who I was like, oh, this is going to be so easy to, like, catch up to this guy. I could not catch up to this guy, no matter how hard I tried, and he looked like he was just running a parade lap. He was just completely upright, just having a great old time, and I was out there like a try hard on my Daytona uh, trying to keep up with this guy you know so it's really dependent on you know your good throttle control and just believing and trusting in the bike and picking good lines it's not so much about hanging off but hanging off is great hanging off really really helps and that's something that can take your riding to the next level whenever you get there but until then uh, you don't really have to do it so focus on good throttle control that would be my advice on that um, Anyways, guys, that's going to wrap up our intermediate tips for today. Uh, thanks so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it. I hope you learned something. Hopefully it was helpful. Uh, again, I'm not a professional. I don't have all the answers, but I have been riding for long enough to where I feel pretty comfortable telling people some of this stuff. Um, again, if you want to win this bike or our uh, giveaway Yamaha R3, uh, hit the links below. Go to our Patreon.com to learn more about that. Uh, hit up our merch page. Every dollar you spend gets you an entry to win. And... Uh, I will catch you guys next time. See you later.